Hi, I'm Alex Falt, Editor-at-Large from Electronic Design, and today I've got uh, Andy Nightingale. He's the Vice President of Product Marketing at Arteris, and uh, they've got an interesting uh, chip level technology that should aid system on uh, chip designers. And well, let me bring you on board. Welcome on board, Andy. Glad to have you here. It's glad to be here. So you, you're you're with the organization Arteris. Can you tell me a little bit about the uh, company itself? So, um, yeah, by all means, Alex. So Arteris is a, a leading uh, system IP company with designs in uh, seven to eight of the top 10 uh, semis for the following verticals automotive, comms, consumer, enterprise, compute, and industrial. We'll talk about those as we go through our, our SOC design discussion, but I thought I'd better mention them up front so when we come back to them, it's, it's, um, it's easy to recall. So our terrace also accelerates innovation horizontally across all these verticals in AI and ML, uh, in functional safety and reliability, uh, and hardware and software, especially around the hardware software interface or, or HSI as we call it. So we're very proud of our collaborations with the leading market shaping customers, uh, resulting in an incremental uh, deployment of over 3 billion uh, system on chips uh, shipped globally to date. Now, uh, when it comes to SOC design, uh, I understand your organization um, has a uh, solution called uh, NOC Connect or something along those lines? So uh, uh, a NOC Interconnect or NOC Interconnect, as you say, stands for Network on Chip. Uh, so this is a, a communication infrastructure uh, used in uh, computer chips for integrated circuits to enable different components or, or IP blocks on the chip to exchange data and information very efficiently. Uh, NOC Interconnect is a, a highly efficient communication highway uh, with a computer within a computer chip, enabling uh, different components or IP blocks to communicate seamlessly. So it does this by using smart data transfer methods and adapting to various data requirements and allowing designers to customize its layout to fit uh, the chip's needs. Uh, this results in improved performance and better utilization of uh, resources on the chip itself. So creating a knock from scratch is a complex task and that demands significant investment in time and expertise. And it may otherwise uh, require specialized knowledge in network design, uh, hardware description languages and verification tools. So in contrast here at Arteris, we have decades of experience in doing just that. So our customers therefore buy into all this knowledge and support as they invest in our commercial uh, IP solutions, in our, into our NOC uh, solution for their, their SOC design challenges. That's very interesting, Andy. So then um, could you explain a little bit more about the, the, the key benefits that you get from this solution? Obviously, it's going to reduce complexity in one way, but how does it address the issue of the information transfer? Yeah. Um, so if you if you look at a commercial uh, knock offering, um, like our, our leading flex knock solution, uh, you'll find that Arteris knock interconnect IP provides a range of advantages uh, that contribute to improved performance, reduced power consumption, and easier uh, chip integration. So it's packetization and serialization techniques minimize routing congestion and wire usage. Fine grain pipeline stage insertion aids in meeting timing requirements and simpler data path logic reduces the die area. And additionally, unit level dynamic clock gating helps manage power consumption efficiently and effectively. And the deeper coupled approach of sockets from transport simplifies the integration of IP blocks, enhancing design modularity and reusability. And this packet-based approach um, that we're talking about here, I'll zoom into the, uh, the bubble at the top just to, to get a, a closer view of that. So in fact, um, a flexible commercial solution like ours is used in vertical markets as, as such as the ones I've just mentioned previously, just as a reminder, automotive, industrial, uh, communications, 
a consumer and enterprise. So it's really a universal uh, solution for uh, SOC design challenges, as I say, using this efficient uh, packet-based approach. Got it, got it. Now, I mean, there's a lot of things going on in SOD's, SOC development right now. Um, when you think about the trends there, uh, will this approach also cover future technologies and uh, make sure that it can optimize those future systems as well? Oh, absolutely, Alex. Yeah, sure. So if we look at the, the verticals I just mentioned, a large addressable market exists for commercial uh, NOC solutions, NOC solutions. And uh, we're well positioned to address you know, high growth segments with growing royalty streams in the future. And we're seeing a lot of traction in the automotive vertical, especially with electric vehicles now becoming the new mobile device. Uh, we're also well positioned to serve the horizontals across these markets as we see demand for uh, NOx for AI and ML applications, uh, functional safety, reliability and security. So another area we operate in is managing the actual connectivity and registers of an SOC itself. But actually, you know, addressing the heart of the problem, looking at macro level, the trend in the industry here, macro level SOC designs have continued on a trajectory of being more complex and integrated with multiple components such as processing units, memory communication interfaces, and more, all integrated into a single chip. And this trend was driven by the need for smaller form factors, of course, improved power efficiency and better performance. And at the same time, SOC designs are increasingly adopting a heterogeneous approach, uh, combining different types of these processing units I just mentioned, like CPUs, GPUs, DSPs and accelerators. And this approach aims to optimize uh, performance and power efficiency for specific tasks such as AI and ML workloads. And we've seen major players starting to explore now multi-die uh, to mitigate the cost of advanced nodes uh, and to improve uh, the yield in their designs. And there are a whole bunch of trends that are also growing, uh, which could easily take up the rest of this session. Uh, but to name a few, we can see, uh, as I mentioned, AI and ML, but acceleration for AI and ML hardware security, such as secure enclaves and hardware-based encryption, uh, reliability features to support auto, uh, automotive with its ever-increasing advanced uh, driver assistance, ADAS, uh, and in-vehicle in entertainment systems as well. So if we now move from the macro level, we move back down to the design challenge level. So at the design level, one key requirement for any of these commercial uh, NOC solutions is that of physical awareness. So physical awareness has now become all but essential uh, for sub 16 nanometer designs. This is because designing the NOC architecture and RTO level without taking physical layout constraints into consideration can lead to significant schedule unpredictability and project risk as the layout team have to converge on timing for each iteration or each change that gets made to the design. So at 16 nanometers or below, knock, knock architectures can easily be created, especially to maximize performance, but can be difficult or even just impractical uh, to lay out and close timing on after that without taking this physical awareness uh, into account. So this problem scenario is, is well known in the SOC design space and SOC designers already employ some strategies to try and minimize the risk here. But our terrorists have specifically addressed this challenge by introducing a physically aware knock. Got it. Now, can you give us an example of how the, the using a physically aware knock can address a design challenge? Yeah, absolutely. So let's select a design from the communication segment uh, and choose a communication system on chip design with a, uh, within that vertical. And specifically, we'll home in on the, the part of the SOC design responsible for signal processing. In this case, we have a bunch of direct memory access controllers that need to talk to static memories um, used as temporary working uh, space or scratch pads. So a 4 by 16 crossbar approach in the design is a good starting point. There are four inputs and 16 outputs. 
Each input can communicate with any of the 16 outputs directly. It's a flexible, efficient interconnection scheme used in many multi-core and system-on-chip designs to enable communication between various IP blocks. Now, uh, let's consider a common design challenge with any crossbar, routing congestion. In a crossbar design, the routing complexity also grows as the number of outputs increases. And as a result, routing congestion can occur, making it challenging to achieve time enclosure and impacting the overall performance and efficiency of the network on chip. So using a physically aware knock, chip designers can effectively manage routing congestion, resulting in a more optimized and efficient on-chip communication infrastructure. And this approach ensures better time enclosure, improved performance, and reduced power consumption, leading to a more robust and reliable SOC design. So the process starts by loading a floor plan representation that defines the blockages and the free working space that we can uh, place our knock. The floor plan can either be an image or a visio diagram or a, left, a def file in our case, uh, if we've already got a previous design that we're working from. And in this instance, we've told the tool that we're targeting a one gigahertz design. And the area we're working with is five millimeters squared. Uh, and this gives us a one nanosecond per millimeter propagation speed on our design. And um, as we're only working on a, a section of our design related to the knock, the blockages here just represent the, the SRAM IPs that we can see. So the following two steps are a mix of automatic uh, default placement from the NOC tool and refinement from the designer using the tool as guidance. So multiple switches are placed near the knock elements that connect, resulting in fewer wires and avoiding congestion. And the critical point is that the designer can see exactly where the switches are going and how many links are actually going to be generated. So a default solution may have to be a, a single monolithic switch in the center of the, the design. But still, it's clear from this visualization now that this would cause a significant congestion issue further down the line, further down the design chain, and give the layout team lots of headaches. So once a designer is happy with their optimized design in this way, they can validate its performance by running some traffic through an automatically generated model of the, the NOC, uh, which we show bandwidth and latency uh, throughout the interconnect. So finally, uh, the physically aware NOC uh, tools can analyze the layout and um, strategically insert pipeline stages in critical paths to mitigate timing issues and alleviate congestion. And fine-grain pipeline stage insertion helps break up long paths, reducing the likelihood of timing violations, improving overall performance. So the RTL and floor plan are then exported and loaded into digital design tools from our EDA partner ecosystem. And the net result is a much better starting point that um, through our internal tests, we've seen as much as a 5x improvement in time spent on the layout phase uh, of the design uh, versus doing all of this by manual uh, estimation. Got it. That is a very, I mean, when you think about what has to be done to achieve that optimization, that's a big challenge there and that you're accomplishing it is very interesting. Um, where do you see that going? What's next? So firstly, uh, note that some of this is informed speculation. Uh, and some is just sort of incremental evolution of, of what we have today. But I believe that chiplets are bringing and will bring a new level of modularity and flexibility uh, to the SOC design process as more end user features drive an increase uh, in scale and complexity as we've been talking about earlier. Uh, and chiplets are individual uh, pre-designed functional blocks that can often be mixed and matched to create custom SOC configurations, offering improved scalability, uh, ease of integration, and simplified design reuse. So uh, watch out you know, in the industry for, for more announcements of more heterogeneous uh, integrations from, from the big players out there.
I also believe uh, there's scope for AI and machine learning techniques as well to uh, dynamically optimize not configurations uh, based on application workloads, uh, traffic patterns, uh, and chiplet interactions, leading to more efficient resource utilization, quicker time to market, obviously, as well. And in terms of the more evolutionary enhancements, uh, there will be an ongoing trend to improve, obviously, performance and bandwidth. That's always going to uh, be the case. Optimize power efficiency, of course, improved um, design productivity and verification. So actually automating further the steps that you, we've just gone through today. And of course, still building on security uh, and reliability, especially you know, as um, safety critical applications uh, are being designed for more, you know, of course, in the automotive space. But one thing's for sure, in my perspective, that not technology is here to stay, uh, and it's only gonna get more complex and more challenging uh, to get it right without expert tools uh, that we have as, as a commercial offering. Um, and you know, like the ones we deployed today and their future versions and the enhancements that they actually bring. Yeah, so, so uh, thank you, Andy. I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, give us this information. I, I know our audience is going to get something out of it. 